Hi class, Mr. Clark here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create the undercoat for our combined creatures. Basically, we're just going to be putting black paint over the whole creature. I've gone ahead and already done um, this side, and as you can see, I've just covered the entire thing in a nice black, um, black coat of paint. What we're really trying to do is get the black paint into all of these nice textures that we made. That way when we come back to paint our creature with the colors that we really want, the black will show through on the textures and show under and create a really nice contrast from the color that we put over top and it'll look much richer and deeper for our creatures. Now, for this project, all you're gonna need is a regular paintbrush, some standard um, black acrylic paint, and a little bit of water, and then maybe a napkin to wipe your brush on as well. For the most part, all we're gonna be doing is getting our black paint and then just painting over the entirety of our creature. I like to go in kind of dotting motions to really make sure that my paint gets into all of the nice cracks and crevices and texture marks that we created last time. Poking is good, that way it gets into those areas. And you want to make sure your paint is not super thick because we don't want to actually fill in the textures, we just want to paint over them. We're not trying to fill in the gaps with the paint, we just want to shade into those texture areas. I like to keep my paint a little bit on the wet side while I'm doing um, this. Just it makes it a little bit easier to get into some of those kind of hard to reach areas. Especially like on the face. And since I already painted one side, I can use that to help me hold it while I'm getting into these other areas like the underside and around. You want to make sure the entire creature is covered in this black paint. It will definitely help for any kind of painting that you want to do when painting your Sculpey. It also gives us a nice base coat to start painting on so that we're not painting directly on the Sculpey itself. We're painting on to the paint first. If you have black gesso, th that'll work really, really well, um, but black acrylic paint will work fine too. And as I said, I like to kind of be poking to make sure I'm filling in all of those little areas that have texture and then making sure to smooth it out. I don't want any big chunks or bumps or runs. I wanna make sure that it's nice and thin so that I can still see the texture that I'm covering up once it's dry. I don't want there to be any parts that are more paint than texture when I spent so much time doing those textures. Now. Especially if you have like a dot texture, you really need to dot with your paintbrush to make sure you're getting into all of those deep recessed areas. If there are any places that you notice could use a little bit more paint, you can always come back and give it a little bit of a second coat if you missed a spot. That looks pretty good for my second antler. And the other side looks 
pretty good as well. All right, so now I'll start on with the shell and the back leg coming in here. Making sure to fill in all of those little gaps, all those spots that I was able to create a nice texture for, I want to keep. And by dotting with my paintbrush allows me to do that. Once I get my paint on there, I'm making sure to spread it out very, very thin. As I said, you do not want any bumps or really chunks of paint when you're doing this because that's going to take away from the nice texture. So make sure that you're brushing all of it out before you go back and get more paint. Making sure to get everything really filled in there, all of those areas that have texture, really nice and covered. Come back in and check. I've got a little bit to do underneath my shell there, just to make sure that that whole area is covered. And I'll go ahead and paint the undersides of my feet right now. Oh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but you'll probably want something to put down so that you're not actually painting on the table. Paper towel works, the piece of cardboard that you've been using works fine too, just so that we're not completely painting on our tables. And as you can see, there's some spots. See how there's a little bit of white right in there? I really want to come in with my paintbrush and be getting those and putting the black paint over those areas that I missed. And if you notice that there's any spots that you didn't get paint on, go ahead and do that now while you're working. takes a little bit of time to get all of these areas filled in, but if you do it right, it'll make your creature, when you actually go to paint it, look so much nicer. Because it's really going to make that texture a lot more dynamic and pop out. Having that black underlayer. Alright, finishing up with my back leg and about to start the tail. Probably going to get a little bit messy picking them up and moving your creature around, but it's just pain. It'll wash off. And as you can see already with the white, what's going to happen is instead of those little lines being white, they're going to be black when you come back over with your actual color that you want your creature to be. And it's going to look really, really nice and dynamic to have those texture marks show up so dramatically with your flesh color or your antler or your horn or your fur, whatever that underlying texture that you were able to create is going to just 
pop out because we're doing this black under layer. And do be careful while you're painting. If you put too much pressure on something like the horns or the antlers, you could break it if you press down really, really hard. They did get a lot stronger once they went into the oven and they got fired, but they're not indestructible by any means. They're still relatively fragile, and you want to be sure that you're not going to accidentally or intentionally press down really, really hard, which can mess up all of your hard work by breaking off one of your creature's horns or spikes or whatever other details you were able to create. All right, and looking pretty good. Almost done, just finishing up last few areas. And then I'll come and flip him over and just make sure that I've got all of the paint all over that tail. And once again, you see how on the leg I missed some spots? That's why we have to come at it and look at it from a lot of different angles to make sure that the whole creature, everything is painted. And just paint it once and be done instead of having to paint it multiple times and go do lots and lots and lots and lots of coats. So it looks a little weird while it's with the wet paint, but once it dries, you'll be able to see the texture very clearly once again. Just give it a once over, make sure there aren't any spots that you missed. Check out your creature. Make sure the whole thing is nice and painted. Come back in here in any of those areas that you still need to add a little bit more to. Maybe touch up any spots. And he looks good. All right, that's how we do our undercoat. And I'll see you guys in the next video where I show you how to start your actual painting.